The project that I'm here to do is to look at Chinese migrations from Guangdong province in South China to Peru during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And in particular, what I try to do in this history is to situate these migrations of Cantonese speakers into Peru into within a global settler colonial moment in history, which is a moment when uh, migration was imagined as a form of colonialism and as a tool for national development. And in this moment, the Peruvian state is imagining nation building as unfolding through this project of bringing in settlers who can populate the rural interior, bring new lands into production, and also colonize the Amazonian and Andean frontiers. So when the Cantonese migrants arrive, they are also part of this global settler colonial moment, imagining themselves as pioneers who can take up these projects. And in particular, they arrive through com transnational commercial firms rooted in Hong Kong, uh, but with very expansive commercial networks that are expanding to all of the settler colonial frontiers now growing across the Pacific, New Zealand, Australia, and all across the Americas. And so as they move into Peru, they start to carve out new commercial opportunities moving into the interior of the nation and ultimately transition to become a uh, plantation owners who are also running uh, modern industrialized agricultural plantations. So they imagine themselves as pioneers who can develop this national building project in Peru, gather a lot of skills, and then transport that back to China by remitting money, by investing in national development projects and local development projects in their native places to help develop the Chinese nation state. So what my project does is I look specifically at a series of imaginaries, a series of projects that uh, two generations of Peruvian Chinese craft over a, about six, 70 years to position themselves differently over time with this imaginary. And uh, I look at uh, print capitalist materials, meaning they're materials, documents that have been produced for mass distribution. They're produced by Peruvian Chinese and for dissemination to larger publics. And in specifically, they are uh, commercial directories, community albums, uh, histories of the community, newspapers, and magazines. And they're published either in Chinese or Spanish or sometimes bilingual in both, depending on the audience they want to appeal to. And in each of these, they take a position in relation to how they situate themselves in, re in relation to the places that they are coming from, the places that they have moved to, but also to a broader set of places like nation states, the two nation states that they move between, the hemispheres that they're part of, a larger Pacific world, and a greater global, uh, global space. Now, what my project does that is unique and that is not often done by other scholars are three things. Uh, the first thing that it does is to really problematize the role of immigrants in national development projects. Oftentimes in this moment, we uh, study the movement of migrants, but specifically Asians, into the Americas in relation to Asian exclusion acts, racial uh, hostility, anti-Asian racism. But here uh, we get to see them as also operating as agents uh, and beneficiaries of national development processes that on the ground can be quite exploitative of other peoples, in particular of indigenous peoples in this moment who are being displaced from their communal lands as agricultural plantations are expanding. The second thing that the project does is it tries to bring a sort of multi-scalar approach to migration studies. Oftentimes, um, migrant, uh, historians of migration who do transnational history focus on the native places and the places of arrival or the two nations that migrants come from, but they forget to look at broader regional frameworks and global perspectives. And the third reason why this is important is that in bringing these other dimensions to light, we see new kinds of things unfold uh, by looking at a different scale or different scales of migration. And one of the things that comes to light is that at the global perspective, we understand that in looking at these materials, that migrants were not only situating themselves in relation to the communities they come from or the nations they come from, they very much understood that what was happening to them and what they were engaging in was part of a larger global moment 
part of larger global world making processes, but also processes that excluded them. So what we see here is that they are moving through worlds of their own. Uh, in particular, they're moving through what I call a Cantonese Pacific world that is expanding as they move, but also being pushed back by violence and racism. Uh, so we get to see a social geography that it doesn't exist, but it exists through the lives of migrants. And the second thing we get to see is that this world of theirs is being pushed back over time uh, through the increasingly anti-Asian hostility that intensifies uh, over the late 19th and into the early 20th century, and by the mid 20th century will pretty much collapse that Cantonese Pacific world that they're part of, and they will be sort of, in essence, local localized communities in their nations of arrival.